Hello, my name is Axel Scherer. I will give you a quick introduction into interface UVCs. So what are these components all about? First of all, their job is to drive the device. Right? We're doing constrained random simulation and you need something that hooks up to your device and pushes the traffic into the device. So that's what these components do. The second thing they do is also they observe the activity on a particular interface. Right? So if you want to know what's going on, let's say you have a bus or whatever you have, you can hook up an interface UVC and monitor the activity. Interface UVCs are protocol specific. Right? You cannot have a generic UVC here that understands multiple protocols. So you have a particular interface UVC for whatever interfaces you have in your design. Let's say AXI, AHB, PCI Express, whatever you have, your custom stuff, you need a particular interface UVC to talk to your device in that particular protocol. Now, in order to um, make all of this happen, we are subdividing the UVC into subcomponents. The first path is the stimulus path, right? We want to drive the design. This is being made up of a sequencer and a driver combination, right? So these are subcomponents of an interface UVC. If we go the other direction, we want to know what's going on at a certain interface. We're using a collector monitor subcomponent. Interface UVCs operate at different abstraction levels. The top components here, the sequencer and the monitor, they, they are always at the transaction level. So they're only dealing with transactions. At the bottom here, we have a driver and collector, and those components can bridge the gap between the transaction level and the signal level. Okay, so we have nice symmetry here. We have a driving path and observing path and we have different levels of abstraction. Let's look at a typical use case. Most often, an interface UVC is hooked up to an RTL model. Okay, and this is how it would look like. Here we have a very nice and clean symmetrical environment where the sequencer and the driver are working together to push traffic into the device. And the collector and the monitor, they work together to observe the traffic that happens on this device. There are other use models. You can also work with a transaction level model, a TLM model. Right? In this case, you don't even need the collector. You can go directly into the monitor because you skip this conversion process from the signal to the transaction level. On the driver side, you might just have two different versions of a driver. Let's say you have a TLM driver and an RTL slash signal driver. You can just swap those out and then talk directly in terms of uh, a transaction level model at that abstraction level. So you can see there's a lot of flexibility uh, in an interface UVC. You can also configure these to your particular application. Here's again the most common or one of the common applications is to drive an, at the signal level and observe from the signal level. So all the subcomponents are instantiated and active. What's also very common is to use this UVC in a passive mode. Let's say you just want to observe traffic. For example, you have an interface UVC that's in the middle of a DUT and you just want to know what's going on on a particular interface or bus. You can then configure this uh, UVC for this purpose. And subsequently, you can also configure it to be just operating at a transaction level, either by driving it or by being passive. So you get the hang of it. This is a very nice, adaptable, and configurable component that can be used to almost any application. There's some more details to it that we will get to in the future set of videos. You can find more videos like this either on this YouTube channel or at support.cadence.com on the video library for the Incisive Simulator. Thank you very much, have a great day, and talk to you soon.